Hello and welcome to Dwarf Fortress. You're watching Dwarf Fortress on my channel, which I am about to you play. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to go with a medium world, I think. Yeah, it gives you so many more options. Short history. I'm going medium history, but short history, medium civilization, low sites, medium beasts, high savagery, minerals everywhere. I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. Now let's do it. So, this is an episode zero. Uh, we're in the smack smo bag snub bag snub uh, the land of wonder that's what that says in dwarfish it sounds like goblin but uh, who am i I'm not a scholar all right so i um i don't know the name of the fort yet i don't have any preconceived idea i usually don't i, I kind of let the dwarves name it i usually like to use the randomizer and if it fails to for too long what a lot of times i'll do is i'll go okay that's an okay last part of the name or first part and then I'll just sort of like compromise I, I like to think of it as the door suggests it's a game you got to play it like a child otherwise what's the point you know it's kind of my thought there so it's gonna run to 125 it's it's chugging along we're still in the age of myth we'll probably stay in the I'm pretty sure we'll stay in the age of myth we usually, almost always do so we usually stay in the age of myth even to up to 250 but uh we got some good area down here. Um, I hate that when it's in the. You know what? I, I yeah, I don't like it when the uh, volcanoes in the ocean, and the good area was too cold. Yeah, yeah. We'll just kind of reload that and see what happens there. Can I see a volcano. I don't want to get too choosy. It, it takes too long otherwise. It was... Yeah, it's not taking too long. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to do uh, episode zero. I am. You, you can just sit there. You, there's nothing required to do. But uh, I, uh, I'm just going to kind of uh, set up the uh, uh, the dwarves, uh, pick skills. Um, it's going to be my typical embark, which is an untypical embark. Uh, at least I don't see anyone else doing the type of all oh, that's in the ocean. Well, it's, well it, it it is what it is. Ugh, I hate when the volcanoes in the ocean. It annoys me. You know, it's it's really hard to get a good volcano anyway. I mean, for one, I I like, um, I like to have all the things. Um, the shallow metals, deep metals is pretty easy when you embark with uh, minerals everywhere. But a lot of times, it's either missing flux or doesn't have sand, and I want sand. It doesn't have all the trading partners. Although I, a lot of times I use uh, smaller worlds. But we'll see. We'll see what we get. We will see. You know, I don't like this one either. Ugh. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, it's a medium world, so it doesn't take long. I don't like it when it's too... Yeah, it was too island. There was like an island, uh, you know... There was a good area there, and it was pissing me off. You do end up with a lot of volcanoes in the ocean, because it seems like the volcano is really random where it pops up. And, you know, if you have a fair amount of water, eh, chances are, you know. A lot of times I create uh, worlds with, well, not a lot, but sometimes I create worlds with advanced parameters. But, okay, we got a good area all right, so that's got connective tissue in there. Yeah, tissue. So this is part of the main world. It doesn't seem like anything is over here, though. Or much of anything. There's some goblins. Looks like an evil area here. I do like to have sunberries if I can help it. Um, oh, we got humans. Yeah, I don't know if we have elves. I don't need. Oh, I got elves over here for sure. That's not connected though. The elves are closest. Elves are would be here if I chose that area. I'll look at it. Let's see where the volcano is. Sometimes I do. It might be up here. We don't see the whole map. Oh, here it is. Oh, it looks probably like that's probably that's probably pretty warm. Probably not. Yeah, it's probably not scorching, but it's probably hot. Maybe it's warm. I'll take a look at that too. Not very hopeful about that volcano. I do like the volcanoes, if I can get a good one.
But we are going to make to the end on this one, because, you know, enough already. That's what I say. All right. Three more years. Two more years. Almost there. And there we go. Okay. Accept. Yeah, sometimes I like to go in evil areas. I just did. Yeah, I, I don't do well with those because you got to get pretty much got un, get underground right away. And that doesn't work for me. It really doesn't. All righty, saving history. Synchronizing food is. Come on, game, let's get this underway. All right, start playing. We are, of course, in world uh, 137. As the natural order of worlds progress, we are up to 137. I am up to 137, or we, if you want to be included in with. Uh, uh, whoever I am. All right, so it's uh, granite. It's going to be granite fifteenth by the time we get there. Uh, some people like to call it uh, January. Oh wait, no. It's uh, yeah, it's spring. So I don't know what it is. Never mind. Fantasy games are. Hmm, wow, this is got everything I need. I do want to check out those other areas real quick, though. It doesn't have anything on. Yeah, I didn't think there was elves. I had a feeling no elves. Let's see what we got going on here. Yeah, I didn't see that. For whatever reason, the, the good areas don't have the flux. See, that actually is pretty good. Uh, damn it. There's the good area. Where's the flux? Damn it. I hate it when they screw me on the flux. Okay. Flux there. Interesting, but there's no flux in the mountain. Ah, uh, this is possible. I like the good areas, I do. Probably gonna end just gonna end up with the closest one. That would be the faithful boats. Kind of like the watchful tomes, too, because of the size. They're good, too. The dead tomes. Oh, they're just way up there. Yeah, they're way up here. The Earth and crafts have a pretty good spread, too. But the faithful boats. They make the most sense because they're the closest. The closest. And that helps for reasons, um, I guess. Uh, a lot of times I've been going by with five by fives, but you know, it's probably pretty big, and this is adds everything I need. It's got a brook. It's the elevation. It's all over the place. I may have a broken stupid thing, a broken wagon. But you know what? Eh. I'm gonna go with it. Yeah, I'm gonna go with it. I got flux. 
on half the map, and I got plenty of metal everywhere. Uh, moderate. Yeah, so I want to do a breakdown. It's probably all the same. It oscillates between deep and some soil. Okay, this is probably all the same, I bet. Okay, I'm going to go with that. Prepare now. Alright, I don't willy-nilly pick points into floors without looking them first. This is another thing I don't see anybody really do. I look at therapists first, and I, I carefully consider. Huh, interesting. I'm not going to uh, have you sit through this. I'm going to come back. I don't know if I'm going to go with this group or not. I'm going to stare at them for a bit. Um, and we'll find out soon. Okay, one little after off the uh, reservation here. I'll kind of break down. What I did, I will go dwarf by dwarf. It's kind of what I do. All right, Shem. Yeah, Shem I was a little different with. Um, uh, I don't have a beekeeper and a waxwork. These are just kind of placeholders. So, you know, they don't really mean anything. I just kind of, I just kind of use this as a worksheet. Beekeeper, I mean to use as when I'm saying like, uh, I want a. Uh, like a, a military dwarf, like a, a you know a militia commander, and wax worker is um, what I you know call the broker and the doctor. I you know sometimes do this or in this case just this. I'll, well, I'll kind of break this down. I, I kind of made some changes last minute. All right, so Shem will be first. Um, yeah, normally I give him some type of uh, craft skill of some sort. With Shem, I went all mental. Um, and, uh, as we could see, oh, as we could see from Shem, it doesn't have a whole lot of, uh, you know, talent. I mean, maybe it would be an okay mechanic, you know, not super great at anything, but, uh, then I looked over here and I'm like, oh, okay, look, it's a great teacher score, even better student, but great, you know, very good teacher, male, so won't be carrying around babies, uh. You know, lesbians are good for that too, you know, uh, military. Um, just because there's no such thing as a dwarven daycare. So if you get a female and she has kids, she's going to carry the babies into battle. Which, yeah, yeah it's, it, exactly. Okay, so uh, with Shem, uh, this is what I, this is kind of what Shem's all about. Uh, we got diagnostician. So uh, Shem will be our doctor. I like to try and get all the doctor skills if we have a doctor, but Shem can have a lot of talents. All right, so we got leader, tactician, teacher, discipline, pacifier, comedian, conversationalist, appraiser, intimidator. All right, so this is the breakdown. Shem is going to be the broker, hence the appraiser, and also conversationalist comedian. I always like to have that. Um, comedian, especially considering uh, some dwarves never get that skill. So Shem, it's interesting uh, personality. Let's look at Shem. Uh, can I look at Shem or no? Uh, oh, I can look at Shem here. But yeah, rarely happy or enthusiastic. So um, yeah, may, he might not actually ever develop comedy on his own, comedian on his own. Um, also, I like to go with pacifier. For a couple reasons. One, I mean, it's a good manager skill. I mean, organizer would be a nice thing to add to this mix, too. Uh, I could have uh, Shem be a pacifier. Is like, it tends to be a little bit more on the honest side. It's not like on the honest side. Of, it's the opposite in a way of flattered. Or not really, but it's sort of like, hey, you just calm down, you know. But it's without kind of lying to them, you know, or consoler, where you're just sort of a little more of a, little, more of a lying skill. Pacifier, you're being honest, but, you know, just calm down. I don't know that that's true either, so never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, Intimidator, it's good for being a militia commander. So the concept here is militia commander, uh, leader, doctor, uh, broker. So all the other skills I can develop, you know, uh, whether it be hammerman or uh, crossbow, you know, uh, ambush or whatever, whatever 
Shem's fate, we'll find out. Shem as a military dwarf would be a better, um, you know, bowman than, but, you know, it's fine. It's all relative. All right, so that's Shem. Let's move on. God in here is the weaponsmith mechanic, and let's look at God. God. Now these uh, matches here, you see crossed. I can't mouse over it, otherwise it goes away. See, but uh, we got crossbowmen, enormous cork, er, enormous corkscrew, and steel. Um, it's just under preferences. It's um, right above note. If you can see that, I can't mouse over it. But uh, so when making crossbows. Uh, God will make better crossbows and works good with steel. See, steel is really the only good takeaway from that. Um, but it's kind of hype, you know, it's it's inflated because now the enormous corkscrews and the steel, or the enormous corkscrews don't really help me. Neither does the crossbows, to be honest. I don't really, you know, that doesn't really float my boat, quite honestly. And these these are short swords, just with bronze. So they're basically useless to me. At least the steel is kind of useful. Uh, Albeit down the line, but still, you know, it's kind of. And this is because of uh, enormous corkscrews, amulets, steel again. All right, so enormous corkscrews, but you know, hey, whatever. All right, amulet. All right, so that's gotten. Otherwise, this is a little bit more uh, res reflective of uh, gotten skill. Forty-five point oh one. So eh, not the best weapon smith, but not the worst. You know. Um. His hunter's pretty solid, actually. All right, so we'll get to him later. Or her. Her. Okay. So, Godin. That's Godin. All right, now we go to Kickross. I don't know what it is. I always get a Kickross for a Carpenter. It's weird. Um, nothing special here, but 56.98, that's good. 61.03, that's good. Um, I, sometimes I make a little bit of a big deal with wood cutting because I, I hate it when the dwarves get injured. I hate to. I like to have a doctor off the bat. I don't like to have like to have to use the doctor off the bat. Uh, so what I do is I put all of it in the carpeting. So uh, max out carpeting, uh, skill of five. Put three in wood cutter and two in dodger. I don't know if it helps with the dodger. I think it does because I used to do just five and five, thinking, oh well, if they're good at doing that, they'll get out of the way. But I had one dwarf uh, hurt himself twice and had five skill, maxed out skill, woodcutter. So now I had the dodging in again. I used to just put one dodging. Now I just, well, that is what it is. All right, so let's get crossed. Datton or Datan or Datton or whatever. I don't know. So I went Armorsmith Cook. Datton's right here. I was thinking leather worker, but I went Armorsmith. So... Uh, not too solid, 38.06. This is against uh, regular dwarves, also the seven that we're with. It's a combination of this, because the thing is, if you, I think it's like on an average, because sometimes, like, for instance, like Brewer, everybody's in the red. So it's not just the group. But if you have someone in the group, like, who has inflated skills, it will skew the numbers. Um, it will, because it'll skew it every time you have uh, migrants come in. Because then it'll be it'll take them into account, you know, based on these numbers. It's like their likelihood to, to do it. It's uh, fit for the role. All right, so armor smith. It's inflated because of breastplates. Otherwise, eh, you know, but eh, with leather worker. So or with armor smith. Um, so essentially, Datton will be a cook. It will be the first uh, act, and uh, armor smith maybe the second act once they find a. Now the cook, if another ar great armorsmith comes along, then that will continue being cooked. You know, that sort of thing. So, or find something else useful, whatever. I might find a fantastic cook and a fantastic uh, armorsmith, and Dan will just, you know, uh, you know, grab a wheelbarrow and get stoned. Who knows? But, all right, so uh, Itan. Itan right here. It's pretty solid. Yeah. 84. Likes great. Which is great. I was actually thinking about blacksmith too, because, or even uh, glassmaker. Uh, but look at this, ninety-eight point five, architect. So, mason uh, building designer. Uh, a lot of times I don't have a dedicated building designer, but 
you know, I do like to get a good building because they, they do uh, actually have quality to the, it, which actually kind of sucks. I wish it just went off Mason because it's so hard to develop the skill of building designer. And it's so hard to get your building designer to design buildings because sometimes they'll do everything else. They'll start freaking hauling carrots and you want them to like design something, but it can be annoying. You got to mess with labors. And I don't know. All right, but I'll deal with it. Zulbin. Zulbin is my glassmaker mechanic. And I go a little mechanic heavy for reasons. Because uh, I like a lot of mechanisms. It's a short answer. Um, Alright, clear glass. Likes clear glass. Also, cabinets. So, uh, if I make, uh, you know, glass cabinets, that's, you know, it'll get, you know, I'll make better ones. Otherwise, it's probably more like 44.43, which is not the worst, but it's below 50. And uh, if I make clear glass cabinets, even better, you know, make very high quality ones. And uh, I was actually thinking for broker because yeah, that's pretty good, pretty, pretty good appraiser. Um, but Shem's actually honestly a better broker. Broker. All right, so mechanic is actually really good, 60.5. That's strong. Uh, it's kind of a shame because <laughs> I like to have the glassmaker be dedicated. But really strong numbers because this is a, you know this is inflated because of enormous corkscrews, whatever. All right, so because I don't know that that really helps. Like, what does that do? Because mechanic doesn't actually make enormous corkscrews. It's just you know I mean I, well actually this one does, but it, weapons but it doesn't add to the mechanic skill. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Sun Terror is a middlesmith mechanic. Again, heavy on. The uh, mechanic, another good mechanic, really good. Um, floodgates kind of artificially pumps it up, but it's still good numbers. Um, yeah, see. Um, so, ninety-one point nine six for blacksmith. That's you know, will probably be more of a mechanic at first. So, actually, uh, Zunter is probably going to be doing more of the the mechanism making off the bat. Um, <clears throat> Blacksmith is something a little bit further down the line. Not as far down the line as armor smith. I might not use my armor smith so much for the first couple of years, you know. So, all right. So, uh, we're gonna go to the next page. I got rid of the uh, picks and the axes. I'm gonna make them. And I'm gonna get rid of everything else because uh, I'm not gonna take any of this stuff except for I'm gonna take booze, but I'm gonna take certain amounts. I'm going to get the anvil badge. It's easier to get rid of everything. And then I'm going to get the boozes. I want six of each. The reason I want six and not, no more than no less is because it's five units per barrel. Like right here, that's one barrel. That's two barrels. So, uh, and you get the barrels for free when you buy the, uh, the booze. So, for two points, you get a, ten, a free ten point barrel. So it's a bit of an exploit, but that's all right. Willow logs, that will become a charcoal. That's the point behind that. Ruddle blocks. Um, this I'll be cutting into, or no, ruddle boulders. I'll be cutting them into blocks. You get four blocks per. So that's 32. It's going to be 32 blocks, like ruddle, uh, for their purpleness. And then tumus coal. I'm going to take uh, 90 of this. This will be my fuel. Uh, each one of these you smelt gives you 9 uh, coke. So I think of it as a net gain of uh, 8. Because you're using one to burn the next, you know, that sort of thing. Unless you have a, a volcano, which we don't. 5 dogs. Uh, we're going to have 5 war dogs, which are female. 2 hunting dogs. Actually, I don't know. No, actually, I think they're all going to be war dogs. I don't have a hunter. A breeding pair of cats, and I'm going to take four walking bags of food. Also, they'll, uh, if you make nest box, they'll make some more food for you before you turn them into food. Good for that. Malachites, the ore of copper. Each one of these gets me four copper bars, but I will smelt them with the ore of casserite, which is the ore of tin. And if you smelt them together, you get bronze. And uh, the other one, because I got 20 and 21, would be sphalerite, which is the ore of zinc. And I smelt that with the copper uh, ore of malachite. 
I'll get brass. So I'll get eight brass for that. I'll get 160 bronze. It also saves you fuel by uh, smelting by the ore. Rather than doing each individual bar, uh, bar, it saves you like six fuel. Otherwise, you have to burn all that extra fuel just to, you know, smelt each one again, uh, where you just do it in the one go with the, um, uh, you can look at the dwarf wiki to get that breakdown. All right, so uh, sand, I want some sand, uh, just some regular sand. Going to get my milks now, just getting these, uh, uh, getting the, damn it. I'm getting these uh, these stones out of the way. These uh, gems, anyway. Perfectly wrong number. All right, so yeah, I just got those just to get them out of the way. All right, and then the rest goes in the sand. Now, <clears throat> the thing with the sand is that it's an exploit that each one point sand you get a free ten point bag. That's not the main reason I do it. I have a glass maker, so I'm going to be turning these sands into something. Like even if I didn't, you know, get the bags somehow. Well, you know, it's got to carry in something. If I had to pay for them, I'd get a lot less, but I'd get some, you know. Uh, sand, so uh, this will be, um, you know, glassware. These milks, another exploit, which is not the main reason I use it. Each different type of milk, I uh, get a, a separate barrel. You can do this with food, too. You get pig, you know, pig meat and cow meat and sheep meat. They all have to go in separate barrels. Uh, but uh, with this, I get each individual barrel. But the main reason I do it is it can turn off permissions in the uh, kitchen. All right, so group name. What do you guys want to call yourselves? The Squeezing Smith. I don't like it. Eh. The Towers of Homage. Okay. I don't hate it. I'll, I'll go with it. Fortress. Colbrand. All right, that's fine. Cell. Sure, I guess. That's what you want to call yourselves. Shape. Mountains. Object. Where's Anvil? All the way down there. But not anvils. Oh, I don't care. Alright. That's fine. Alright. The blue salve is an image of seven dwarves, mountains, and anvils. The seven dwarves are engraving the mountains, the anvils are burning. That's fine. E and bark. Let's do this. We did bring milk and booze. All right. Here the dingoes get hungry. We won't see dingoes. Um, <clears throat> Captain Duck says that too all the time. I got that from him. Oh, Brand. Sure. That's a bark. Strike the earth. If you're clicking, I um, I do that when I uh, drink water or whatever, so you don't have to hear me swallow, because, you know, that would be gross. I don't want to be gross. I want to be fun. I want you to watch my video saying, you know, not only was he not gross, uh, I thought he was fun. You know, that's the goal. I don't know if I'm going to reach it. I'll never know. I don't have a comment section. Just have to hope while well, the game is busy not responding. There we go. All right, we don't have a destroyed uh, um, wagon. That's good. Look at the trees. I like feather trees. All right. There's our stuff. I like a more level ground, but oh, okay. Oh, that's that's good. That is good. Yeah. All right. Sorry, I got excited. All right, so. Oh, is this Jet? Shale? Okay. Got sand over there. We got sand right down there. Oh, okay, that's good. 
shale. Conglomerate. I was just going to say conglomerate, too. I really was. But I didn't want to be wrong. And I would have been right. Shale. Yeah, that one I knew, but... I like jet because it's cooler. You know. I don't know. Alright, so... It's not super exciting. Well, there's some stuff around. You see aluminum sticking out all over the place, but, you know, that's normally what you don't see. You don't normally see that stuff. Conglomerate. Yeah, that's fine. I'm pretty sure this. Oh, is this uh, bauxite or colonite? It's bauxite. Probably. I bet you we have uh, colonite though. Pudding stone. I have a feeling we have. Uh, we're gonna find out. So this is episode zero. So I'm not actually gonna do anything. Tumus coal. Very nice. Magnetite. I thought it was magnetite too. I could tell the difference between this and tetrahedra sometimes by the amount. Like a big. Uh, it's like this is kind of like r right on the on the edge. It's like I'm not sure whether it's uh, tetrahedrite or magnetite. Magnetite is the ore of iron. Tetrahedrite is the ore of copper. Forty percent silver. So what's this? Oh, this schist orthoclase right here. More schist, but that was right. Uh, Galena, I bet. Galena, Mika, I was going to say Gabriel, Mika, Shale again, yeah, a lot of Shale, Shale, I say Shale, okay, some more Shale, oh, it's cold, microcline looks like, now this is the best tetrahedrite. Yep. Tetrahedrite. Oh, uh, cinnabar. Cinnabar. Yep. Is it? No, it's bauxite. I don't know. Maybe I don't. A hematite. A bit. Hematite. Bauxite. Oh, rubies. Yeah. Rubies ain't cheap, baby. Magnetite again, I bet. Ooh, and I think this might be, um, this might be some type of silver or platinum. Yeah, I just knew it. I don't know how I knew it, but apparently I did. Magnetite, hematite. I should have called it. I was going to say magnetite. Oh, more cinnabar, I bet. I was hoping for rock uh, crystal, but. All right, so, yeah, it's episode zero. I don't do a whole lot. I do this. Oh, also I do this. Because I think it's cool. Whee! All right, so, so guys, I'll, I'll micro this uh, on episode one. Uh, here's other skills. Look at Shem. Look at Shem. Yeah, Shem. Shem's also the expedition leader, in addition to all the other hats he's ever going to put on him later. Uh, leader... Pacifier, teacher, intimidator, conversation screen. Yeah, so Shim's got pet personality. Also, I'm quite a dancer. All right. So, yeah. Also, the animals. Oh, we got a breeding pair of horses. You can always check that by, by this as well. Yeah. So I could have horses. Horses. Alright, so is there anything in the area? Nope. Alright, I do that. And then the most important thing I do, I don't do a lot of cheats. I do a couple. For one thing, I'll just come clean. For one, I'm a dirty cheater. I, um, I highlight cursed units. I want to know about vampires and werewolves because I hate them. They're so annoying. I hate them killing my doors. Um, yeah. They irritate me. I hate them. Uh, and uh, so I can, you know, deal with them a little quicker. So I, I have a, 
I have some oracle powers, like to put it in game terms. We somehow have the ability to fret out uh, vampires and werewolves, because I think of that more of a human thing than a vamp, than a dwarf thing. I don't know. I don't like to cross the streams when it comes to fantasy like that. I don't know. I, you know, dwarf vampires, it's sort of like, ah, uh, why not dwarf vampire ninja? You know, wow. Yeah, I don't know. It's like too much. You know, you just keep fantasy a little simpler sometimes. A little bit more of a classic, classical fantasy guy. So, um, this is what I, yeah, get to what I was going to do. This is the other oracle thing I do. I want to know what kind of stone is around. So I prospect all. And uh, this gives you a, a total tally. If you prospect, it'll show you everything you can see in the map, like all the sandy loam and the sand and stuff like this. This shows you everything you can see and everything you can't. So this gives me an idea. All right, so 138 gives you an idea of where the caverns come in. See, 93, 93, the cell of all the underground shrubs and trees, 93 could very very well be the very bottom of the topmost layer of the first level of the caverns. So, let's see what that means. Okay. So, 127, 93, so we got some room. Especially with the mountain. You know. So, 127, we don't have to worry until, like, just a, you know, just a short of a hundred. I like to try and give myself ten levels. I mean, usually, you know, if we went to 103, I'm sure we wouldn't hit it. But, you know, I, I kind of keep that as a limit, just in case. You never know. I never know. I'd say I never know. Somebody may know. Tony knows. Armok knows. Armok is the one who knows. Which is kind of Tony, but it's sort of like the... I don't, never mind. Alright, so, so, as you can see, the middle layer and the See, the bottom layer, you can kind of see where the, it ends to a degree. It looks between 3 and minus 11. That looks all the bottom layer. Uh, middle layer, somewhere in between there. Uh, we don't have much of a clue. Also shows what kind of uh, woods we have to work with. Uh, our carpenter didn't like any anything in particular as far as wood, so it doesn't really matter. Peach is a he peach and plum are heavier woods. Feather is super; it's the lightest wood in the game. Uh, ginkgo is a little lighter. Apple's a little heavier. These are all kind of normal. I don't know. And yeah, well, um, what is it? Uh, Bloodthorn is is one of the he is I think the heaviest wood of all, but that's <laughs> way down there. So. All right, got um, pigtail. That's way down there. Don't have a lot of vegetables, but this changes. I mean, this summer we'll probably get more of that sort of thing. Doesn't seem to be a lot. We got coal, uh, which is important, and lignite. Uh, so we'll be able to make coke, and we got coalite. So if we want to start making porcelain, this and that, we can. So good, good. Want to check my rock crystal? I feel like I'm dragging this out. I am. We're we're almost done. Ooh, four grand, nice. It's a grand. I'm like, okay, good. But four grand is four times as good as that. Brought at a I like to see as high a number as possible, but it's way down there anyway. Eleven. So yeah. Ooh, look at that. Happy, happy, joy, joy. We're at uh, 127. Um, we have volcanism, baby. We have volcanism. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Wow. I'm happy. That's why I'm making noises. All right, so uh, marble's at 130. So that's, oh, wow. Probably be able to see some. This is 127. Huh. So we got flux close to the top. We got the sands. I already knew we had sand, so it does. The color doesn't matter. Sand is sand in this game, but as it is in real life, it only matters if you like. Oh, I'm in a red sand desert. That's cool, or you know, or I'm in a yellow sand. You know, whatever. So 
quartzite I like, but for no particular reason. I think it looks cool. If you Google it, that's why I like it. Ruddle's cool too for the same reason. I like Ruddle. Okay, I think I've wasted enough of, um, yeah, a little blabby. All right, so, yeah, it's a good spread. A lot of gold. That's nice. Uh, some platinum. It's nice to have a lot of platinum. Wish we had some aluminum. Maybe my, I don't know if my uh, civilization or if the humans have it, so I might be able to get some. I like to be, I like to have access to everything if I can. All right, but uh, as far as iron, we got almost seven grand of magnetite, so that's good right there. But we also have limonite and hematite, so yes, oh yeah, we got a lot. Huh. Yeah, so yeah, f oh, about fifteen grand, almost maybe not quite, but just about fifteen. Grand. Yeah, so that's good. I'll take it. We got plenty of silver, silver, Galena is essentially kind of silver, it's 50% silver in that breakdown. Alright, so Castorite is tin for tin glazes and also to make more bronze. Valorite is zinc to make more brass, or if I just want to make zinc. Um, like for instance, let's see, what do you like? Like bismuth bronze. Ugh, whatever. Yeah, so if I wanted to have my... <laughs> blacksmith make things if uh, I had my blacksmith make stuff out of bismuth bronze it'd make uh, better you know better of it because he likes bismuth bronze or uh, she does she you know all right so thanks for watching thanks for uh, existing thank your parents for bringing you this world and watching my video indirectly they are responsible for that and that's the way life works uh, as far as life goes please Continue living your life responsibly. Make sure you don't uh, drink in park because that causes people. Uh, there was a, it's a bumper sticker that said something about that. It sounded pretty profound, so I thought I'd bring it up. Thanks, everybody. Bye.